everyone. Welcome to Successfully Navigating PPE, brought to you by Distributor Central, Aprons, etc., and Web Company. This is Aubrey Weaver with Distributor Central, and we're so excited to bring to you some great information from some of our supplier partners today. Uh, presenting today, we have Pam Pennington, VP of Strategic Partnerships at Aprons, etc., and Rena Ashfeld, VP of Sales at Web Company. During today's presentation, please feel free to ask any questions using that question box on the GoToWebinar panel. We'll address the questions after the presentations are over, and if we miss any, we'll make sure and follow up after the webinar with you. So we're going to go ahead and get started today with Pam Pennington, and she's going to teach you a little bit about MAC. Go ahead, Pam. Thank you, Aubrey, and hello, everyone. I appreciate you taking time to attend today. And because of a very positive response we received from our first webinar, I feel confident you'll find it useful. Again, my name is Tam Pennington with Aprons, et cetera. We have been a supplier in the promotional products industry since 1984, and I've been with the company for over 15 years. Over the past few months, we've had conversations with many of you, and these discussions have let us know more about what types of masks and features your clients are seeking. And we've made it a goal for our company to learn everything we can about this category of product so we can better help you, and we've held in-house training throughout this time period. This training has helped our management and customer service team uh, feel more confident to call ourselves mask specialists. The learning process is going to continue for all of us, but I hope the information to share with you today will make you a mask specialist for your clients. I do want to mention that we've been a longtime partner with Distributor Central. They actually manage our website and we work with Aubrey, and we've been very pleased uh, with that relationship. As Aubrey mentioned, uh, there is a question box. I have Laura, our customer service manager, viewing and answering questions, and she'll answer as many as she, as she can live, and we'll make sure all your questions are answered soon as we can. Uh, basically, our class curriculum today will fall into three categories. We've got regulations and guidelines, styles and types of masks and face coverings, and clients and prospects for this type of PPA. E, excuse me. Just a little history refresher, and yes, this is history we're not all in the middle of. On January 20th, the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in the U.S., and then on March 13th, a national emergency was declared. And I don't know about you guys, but it's been a very, very long five months. Um, I wanted to share some reference articles with you and a relative quote. In times of change, learners inherit the earth, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. I read an article recently that contained several strong statements I wanted to point out. This is a very large and growing market where many retail and celebrity brands are already releasing masks. And as we know, the promotional products industry always does best when it follows retail trends. And finally, a very relative comment for our industry and this product. What you are offering is the most valuable real estate for your client's brand, a person's face. I can suggest some additional training, PPAI sponsored a webinar that you can view online. It not only covers masks, but other PPE. Just a heads up on this one, it contains a lot of technical and in-depth information if that's what you're seeking. In a recent article from ASI, they included a graphic I wanted to share with you. It shows how much mass and PPE have influenced our searches for products on ESP. Pins remain the only item still in the top 10. Let's talk for a few minutes about the regulations and guidelines. 
And there were a lot of new regulations and guidelines that had to be put in place when the national emergency was declared. Many of the ones that were in place already were for masks that were designed to protect medical personnel. So first, FDA put in place an emergency use authorization, pronounced E-Way, that basically reclassified face masks for use by the general public. CDC then came in and said, now non-medical cloth and disposable masks are considered textile consumer products or apparel. Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act does include testing that they suggest for children's masks. And all the Prop 65 requirements are in place for masks also. This is an important slide and I'll reference back to the CDC recommendations about cloth face masks throughout the presentation today. Recommended masks need to cover the nose and fit below the chin with no gaps on the sides of the face. They need to be multiple layers of breathable fabric and be washable. Additionally, cloth face masks should not be worn by children under the age of two, anyone who has trouble breathing, and anyone unable to remove the mask without assistance. There are some suggested fabrics for, mace, uh, for commercially purchased face masks, and these are all tightly woven. Uh, cotton is among them, silk and chiffon as layering options, and polyester spandex blends. And there is a potential added protection from combinations of two fabrics because they can create a static charge. Most of our masks combine two fibers, polyester and spandex. So with this fabric, you get the mechanical benefits of a tight weave, along with the electrostatic properties that can help trap smaller viral particles. For the most recent mandates, this graphic shows where face masks are required. Right now, the only states with no regulations are the Dakotas and Nebraska. But in 23 states, wearing face masks is now mandatory in public. Let's talk about the styles and types of masks and face coverings. And we all know there is a plethora of masks available in our industry. So let's see if we can break this down a little bit for you. I want to talk first, though, because I want to encourage everyone to order a sample of any mask you're proposing. And I have had many conversations with our distributor partners who are trying to get their customer replacement orders where there was dissatisfaction in function or quality. And of course, this is a sad and stressful situation that none of us want or need right now. So any mask shown in this presentation that are our products will have a style number listed beside them. Make a note when you see one that you would like to get a sample. They are free at two-piece quantities. Uh, just check with us if you have a special situation. You send those requests to our info at email address, and I'll have that for you at the end of the session today. So. With this product group, maybe more than others, it is going to be necessary for you to be a consultant to your client. One question you need to find out is who will be wearing the mask? Are these employees? Are these visitors who might actually need disposables? Are they students? This will help you identify a mask and a size. In what environment will the mask be worn? Inside, outside in the heat, is it all day use, is it intermittent use? And just like event products, most mass programs have a target start date. So be sure to find that information and be aware. Right now, demand is high and shipping has slowed. So manage expectations of your customers and don't overpromise for firm dates. And finally, an important question, once your 
client gets their mask, how are they going to distribute them to wearers? And also, will there be one or multiple ship to locations? So I'm going to call this slide the wide, wide world of masks. As you were aware by now, you have an abundance of choices for face masks. We have the underwear category. We have the too much time on our hands category. And next we have our think about it category. The first one in this category is the clear window mask. And it looks like a fun and different idea, but this mask was created for the hearing impaired. 80% of this mask is non-breathable plastic. <clears throat> so the next mask in this category is gonna be more comfortable, but masks with valves were designed for construction work. They allow your breath to escape which is the opposite of what you want in COVID protection. These masks are often called respirators. Another popular item to keep you cool in the summer has always been the neck gaiters that you wet. Uh, the CDC directly addresses this type of situation on their website as not recommended. And their quote basically is a wet cloth face covering may make it difficult to breathe. So let's add this choice to our think about it category. I, I want to add these particular comments. Wear a mask, any mask. My intent is only to make you um, a more informed advisor to your client. Okay, first let's talk about disposable. And it's confusing when someone tells you they need a disposable mask because most of them look alike. The simple question you need to ask is, do you need a medical grade or a civilian mask? The medical grade three-ply masks are often called level one, two, or three, or surgical. The medical N95 mask will often have certifications required or specify a 3M brand. CDC only recommends these masks to be used by medical personnel. For civilian masks, which is what we offer, you have the three-ply or the KN95 style mask. A civilian three-ply disposable mask differs from the medical because of its filtration protection. But a KN95 mask provides the same protection as the best approved mask, the N95. The KN95 mask <clears throat> is a mask made to Chinese medical standards with the same filtration as the medical N95 US mask. So if you really want to get superior protection, the best mask available for civilian use is going to be the KN95 disposable. If your clients have safety concerns, and that's what they express to you, the disposable mask may be something you want to discuss. Okay, there are several general categories of face mask designs, and the most popular are the ear loop style. And this can be elastic with and without adjustability, stretch fabric that's not adjustable, openings cut in the design, and these also can represent an add-on sale for you with ear saver devices available from our industry. One factor to consider when recommending a mask to your client is if the mask is to be worn for a long period of time or just intermittently. This type of mask usually hangs around your neck until you need to put it on your face. And this is going to include masks with neck and head ties, bandanas and scarves are in this category, and neck gaiters. Also, when suggesting a mask that will be worn in a work situation, make sure you've addressed safety concerns, for instance, straps that can get caught in machinery. 
there are also intermittent wear options for masks with ear loops. And they're going to include lanyards, which have been popular with this type mask, glove clips, and magnetic clips. All of these are also available through your industry suppliers, and they represent an add-on sale for you. For your clients who specify only USA masks, first, your options are going to be a little narrower. But what you need to do is find out if their need is blank or imprinted. For instance, the pleated style of flat mask shown here, whether fabric or disposable, are generally not able to be printed. The USA imprinted mask you see here is actually an embroidered mask design. As you'll recall, we talked a few minutes ago about the CDC recommendation for how a cloth mask should the wearer's face. One way to do this is by selecting the proper size mask. For adults, one feature that helps with sizing is to have either adjustable ear loops or ties. We have a mask that's considered youth small. It's generally worn by women or small adults and children over 12. Aprons, et cetera, also offers children's masks. They have the testing available for all the Sipsia concerns for fabric and imprinting. So when talking to your customer, you may find that they need a combination of these sizes or several different artworks. One to let you know you can mix sizes and artworks for combined column up pricing and additional setup is what you would have to incur as call as long as they're shipped to the same address. One of CDC recommendations for our good mask was that it was breathable and also maintained a seal against the size of the wearer's face. And this is especially a challenge in the hotter summer months we're in now with the humid days. There is really unfortunately an inverse relationship between protection and breathability. It's going to be hard to achieve both of those things. But this can be accomplished some by a design that creates an airspace in front of the nose. And that may be in a sewn structured shape. Some pleated styles will offer you that. Stiffer fabrics, as long as it touches on the sides of your face. And performance fabrics can also give you the same breathability. If you're talking with your customer about a logoed mask, there are several imprint methods for you to consider. The first is screen print or heat transfer, and that's usually on a cotton or a blended fabric. Uh, fabric masks, because they require frequent washing, this is going to cause fading of the imprint. Um, surface imprint. So you may want to mention this to your, your client. But the most important is to be aware of the imprint ink and any precautions that may exist for them, especially since the printed masks are being worn on the face. Dye sublimation in polyester masks does offer you full permanent full color imprints. You have no surface imprint to block airflow over the face. And this is more important if you're using a transfer instead of a screen print. So you want to keep from blocking airflow on the mask. And for dye sublimation, there are no precautions for being worn on the face. Embroidery, you can do multiple fabrics. A lot of people like the upscale finish look. Um, the suggestion, though, is to embroider before sewing the layers so you don't have the embroidery next to the face. When you work with your clients on their branded mask, basically you're both trying to make something that is terrific seem appealing. And the goal is to create something that the wearer will want to put on their face. And good design is going to be important for those goals. When you're doing locations, the side is a good location many people choose, one side or both. Left side is more popular uh, as a side. You've got to also consider um, the mask style. It could be that you have to imprint in the center of the mask. 
step and repeat is a very popular option as well as pattern with an imprint. And both of these last two options offer you a subtle branding, which is what a lot of branded masks are trying to accomplish now. Some types of masks require or will accommodate a filter. So consider the cost and availability of filters when you're suggesting this type of mask for your clients. I have also found from industry conversations that although a lot of customers request masks with filters, mainly because they've heard about them so much, most do not follow through and actually wear a filter. Uh, we do offer both choices, but I do most generally recommend just using a two-ply option to satisfy your CDC requirements without a filter to be maintained, and this is especially important on large programs. One of the most important questions to ask your customer is how they intend to distribute the mask to their employees or customers. Bulk packaging, whether with a disposable or fabric mask, is often not the preferred manner to distribute a product that's going to be wear, worn on someone's face. However, there may be economy with this type of packaging. Most of our face masks are individually bagged for contact-free distribution, and this is a particularly strong feature for large orders. A question that you will probably get asked is how and when to properly wash a face mask. And I did find this article that had some really uh, good tips for you. But I think it might be simpler to pass along this particular fact. COVID has a lipid or a fat membrane that needs to be ruptured to kill the virus. Since it's a virus, antibacterial agents don't affect it. But what does is soap and water from washing, hot water, or alcohol. And this applies to both your body and potentially contaminated items. So I'm going to give you this visual as an aid. Yep, butter. Just pretend that what you are cleaning is covered in butter, something we can all relate to. Also, disposable masks, including the N and KN95, are generally not able to be cleaned. I want to take a minute to introduce you um, to a new PPE item for you, our Stay Safe kits that have a bag that can be personalized with your logo. And this was created in response to inquiries from you guys and is great for employees, as gifts to customers, and it just has a 50-piece minimum. Let's talk about clients and prospects. I'm putting this slide first because for public or private schools in your area, this is who you need to be talking to now, as in this afternoon or next week. The figures on this graphic represent U.S. K-12 schools. Masks may be required on school transportation, in classrooms, at events. Every district will vary and each quote will be different. Many are providing at least some masks for students and staff, either at no charge or for a fee. So please reach out for advice if you need our help with samples, quotes, or virtual presentations. And this is now, guys, and it has to be moved on fairly quickly because schools are opening and there are time frames required for getting this process complete. This group of prospects represent all the types of business that we've worked with that have customer contact. And we've actually produced masks here for our distributors for all these categories. Masks are great opportunities also for self-promo. We talked uh, about schools, 
don't forget there are book uh, stores and fundraising opportunities there. Another important prospect group uh, for a mass is manufacturing where employees are working closely together and masks are being required for source control. Businesses requiring employees and customers to wear masks are going to vary greatly depending on the state. Um, on July 20th, Walmart and Sam's Club is now requiring masks for customers along with Starbucks and Best Buy. The president of the National Retail Federation Trade Group has encouraged retailers to adopt a nationwide policy that requires all customers to wear masks. Starting tomorrow, McDonald's is requiring masks at all its locations. I want to add another note to this retail grouping. Um, in addition, to uh, the employees or customers, some of, since most of the face masks are individually bagged, they are also suitable for retail sales. So if you have a local retail location, gift shops, really anyone like that, you can create a very nice, exciting design and they can sell masks at their location. Uh, this is where you also have an opportunity for disposable mask sales since most of these locations, including medical offices also, will supply a mask, a disposable mask, to their customers if they don't have one when they're entering. Before I leave today, I wanted to let you know about aprons, how aprons, etc. can help you with other needs related to this group of products. And we have a new tent that can be used at building entrances to help with disinfection and temperature checks for visitors and employees. Our waterproof table covers can be sanitized regularly throughout the day while still on the table. Uh, one of our most popular products by far has been our chair headrest covers, and that's to denote social distance seating for meetings and in venues. And we've also added in-stock hand sanitizers in three sizes. I wanted to finish our presentation today by sharing with you that I feel like there is really a special kinship among all of us in our industry as survivors of this terrible pandemic. Many of us on both personal and business levels. And so I look forward to talking with you about your upcoming projects when you need advice. And as I have with many of you already, uh, here's our contact information for when you need to reach out to us. Thank you again for attending today. Uh, please let us know what we can do to help you become a mass specialist for your client. And from a personal standpoint, please wear your mask, guys. Help protect those around you. And from a business standpoint, go out and sell masks so others can protect you. So I'm going to turn the presentation back over to Aubrey now. And thank you. Hi. Thanks, Pam. That was great information. I personally know that I'm not washing my cloth mask quite as much as I should be. So that's one thing I took away from that. Um, we do have a few questions. Um, I'm just going to run through a couple of those questions that I think might be helpful for everybody, if you don't mind, Pam, and then we'll sure. get over to Rena. Okay. So are any of your masks USA made? We have several USA made choices. We have an embroidered mask that is USA made. We have a, a pleated mask that is not able to be imprinted that's available in 34 colors. It is USA made. We do not have dye sublimated USA masks. Okay. And then I had a couple questions about net gaiters. So okay. um, we have a question about the Larry, if it's one layer, or if you suggest that it be wear, be worn with multiple layers? 
technically, if you're looking at what the CDC says, they say that it should have two layers. However, most neck gaiters are just a single layer. Neck gaiters have been really popular for us. They are getting to be not quite as popular uh, in the heat. If um, you have situations where people are working outside in the heat, they're not liking that so much, uh, but they're still a great intermittent wear use. So um, generally you can double your neck gaiter down and have your two layers, but most of the time as it's worn by itself, it is a single layer, which again, this is some protection. It's better than not wearing anything, but it's not technically as suggested by CDC. Okay. And then uh, one last question. Um, are technical materials easier to breathe through than cotton? Is cotton more effective in stopping droplets than technical materials? The main thing for anything like this is going to be that it be tightly woven. And so when you're looking at cotton materials or um, specifically with cotton, you have to make sure that you have a really high thread count of cotton. Um, some cotton threads tend to be larger threads and you can see the weave a lot more. When you're looking at a situation of a cotton mask that you can see the weave, then you probably don't have as tightly woven. Our polyester is a performance polyester. Um, it is uh, created to be a, a special cool uh, blend. Uh, so it does satisfy the breathability as much as it can. And like I say, this is kind of all our problem. It, it, we're putting something on our face that the intent is that we keep our breath inside the mask. Um, so it's not ever going to be a really comfortable situation. The best we can do is try to get a design that's going to help you have a little air space there to breathe and get a fabric. So um, the other point being, if you have cotton mask, as I mentioned, there is some advantage to have two different fibers together. So sometimes with a cotton mask, if you're looking at one of those, a better would be one that also combines another fabric other than just 100% cotton. Great. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and we're going to learn more about another top demand PPE item, hand sanitizers from Marina Ashfeld at Web Company. Well, hello there. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. All right. I am, that, thank you, that's a tough act to follow, uh, Pam and Laura, great job. I am Rena Ashfeld with Web Company, and I am the VP of Sales. I've been with Web Company for five months, and you say, how can she possibly be a sanitizer expert in five months? Well, let me tell you, I can. Um, I have a PowerPoint. If you have any questions, shoot them out. Hand sanitizer is one of the top three PPE items. So um, great lineup today for you when you're working with PPE items. And um, I will get right into it. So as Pam said, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic on March 11th, 2020. And what does that mean? Um, it came out. There was many things that um, was talked about. The CDC said, wash your hands. And if you use hand sanitizer, you must have 60% alcohol in the hand sanitizer in order for it to be to work. The FDA is also speaking about um, different items out there. So I want, I'm, I'm trying, I'm going to try to address everything today in this PowerPoint. I know that there's going to be some questions and some things coming up. Um, and I'm going to try to just kind of cover everything for you. Um, know who you're buying from. Web company has been around for um, 27 years and we make everything in house in our factory in Minnesota. So we have 60,000 square feet that we make our wonderful, liquid gold, I like to call it. <laughs> um, 
We do also import, so I don't want that to get confused. We do make our own hand sanitizer in house, but in order of keeping up with demand, we did import some hand sanitizers as well. Our, our website does reflect the ones that are made in the USA as opposed to imported, so you will see that. Um, we do want to be your trusted manufacturing partner. Uh, we use ethyl alcohol. We're very um, upfront with all of our, you know, registrations, testings, all that I will show you here. We've seen a lot and we've had a lot of customers come to us saying, I sent my money to this company I've never heard of before. They had great pricing and then I never saw it again. Or, um, you know, I had one customer that said, we ordered some sanitizer and we tested it ourselves, and there was not, you know, the, the uh, amount of ethyl alcohol that they were saying was in it. And um, we are very proud to say that we do have testing in-house that we do. We use 62% ethyl, ethyl alcohol, but we, our testing show that we're anywhere from 65 to 75, and I'll get that to that later in the slide, but we do say we are at 62% ethyl alcohol. Um, all sanitizers must have the, the facts on, on the label. So a lot of people were saying, I don't want any labels on our, you know, on our sanitizer one cent. And our response is always, it does have to come with the, the drug facts, the ingredients label that is um, per FDA and Otherwise, we would get in trouble. They have lot numbers. They need to. They need to be on there. The biggest question that came up was methyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol. <laughs> they sound alike, and they're both hard to say. Um, so the methyl alcohol is what you are hearing that has been detected in hand sanitizer that is being pulled off the of shelves. So recently, Target and Walmart. If you can Google it, fact check it. Um, have been recalling some brands. There is a long list of brands um, that you should avoid per um, CDC and FDA. Uh, ours is not one of them. We are very proud of our testing. This is a, a recent test that we have and um, you will see that um, the ND means not detected. So we say our ethyl alcohol is at 62%. On this batch, we did test at 72.5. So we don't, because it does verify, we never get below. Um, when we take alcohol, we take it at 190 proof and boil it down. So we the, we'll never get below 62, we'll always be higher. So we do say we're at 62%, but you will see our testing here shows what we are at. There's some things you can ask for. I know that, um, I've, a lot of my distributor friends are like, I'm just afraid to sell hand sanitizer because of the things you need to know. And um, there are things that you can ask for. There are, are the testing results for sure that I showed you in the previous slide, the DUNS number, the FEI number, and the safety data sheet. Um, we do have this copy of registration on our website. So when you're looking at our hand sanitizers, you will always have access to this copy of registration, the certifi certificate. The um, DUNS number and the FEI number, what does that mean? Those, I just kind of listed those out again. Um, some of you may or may not have heard that where we have both. And then the safety data sheet. So. Um, when I started at Web, uh, people were asking for the safety data sheet, and I found this was really interesting because if you don't, you should always be able to have these things when you're as when you're buying from your supplier. So um, the safety data sheet we have on both of ours, we have it on our imported and on our USA made sanitizer. Uh, we did talk about you know who's a customer and. <laughs> I jokingly said anybody with hands, and I, you know, I say that in jest, but truly we have seen there's not one fantastic case history. There's there's several. Um, and the, and I made I made a list just off the top of my head here of of who all I've seen come through. And and there's so many more. I could I could make this list 10 times longer. Um, but really everybody, you know, I mean, anybody can use hand sanitizer. It is a great 
piece to give out. It's a great piece as a self promo. It's a great piece to stay in front of people. Um, and it's also of use. This is um, something that everybody should have when they're not, when they don't have access to soap and water. And I think that, you know, we find ourselves out and about and um, you don't always have that. So the hand sanitizer is a great option for that. Web company, we have um, many options, <laughs> many. So we have, uh, we currently have six filling lines and we can do about a thousand pieces per day in assorted styles. Our production time had, has varied. Um, we were, when COVID hit, we were at a longer lead time just because of the sheer amount of orders in house. And we kept hearing, when are you gonna get it in stock? And it's like, well, we have it in stock. <laughs> we make it, we're just that buried in orders. Um, so the hand sanitizer orders have, you know, we had a big push with back to work. We had a big push now we're seeing with back to school. So as kind of Pam alluded to before, that's, this is something that um, isn't gonna go away. You know, hand sanitizer is something that best practices will just, we will always have in our car, in our purse, in our, um, you know, at, at our reach. The scent <laughs> has been a fun topic. Yes, I'm going to address the scents. The um, ethyl alcohol that we use does have a scent. Um, it is a byproduct and um, does have what's lovingly referred to as a boozy scent or a tequila or a, I said fine tequila. Um, we were in the same boat as, as many USA manufacturers and we collectively have, you know, talked about adding additives to make our scent with what we have, the ethyl alcohol, better and better. We are constantly evolving our scent and that is no joke. Every time I go in, Yes, they call me the nose. It's not because I have a big nose. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, I do. I'm always smelling new and new scents, and it, it's exciting. So mid uh, mid August, we're going to be having all of these scents available at the end of August. So if you love eucalyptus and you want to get a scent, we will be advertising that. Um, these scents will all be when they are all available listed on our website as well. So it's these four options of bottles for now. And again, they will be, um, it's not an overpowering scent, but it is enough that when you smell it, you do smell the cucumber or the eucalyptus or the lemon or the mint. Um, so that is coming soon and we are excited. We do have the lemon out now and we have unscented out now. So that is something that we are pretty proud to show off and we, you'll be seeing a lot of that in the coming months. We fill everything in house. Um, you know, I, I get people that say, you know, I've got hand sanitizer before and from other places and they were unevenly filled. Can yours be evenly filled? And I'm like, we have no choice. These are on a filling line and they are precision. <laughs> so not only are they precision filled, but they are precision labeled as well. Have we tried to speed up the process and put labels on as, they're coming, you know, we fill them and then label them later. We have been known to do that as well. Anything we can do to get this, these orders out the door faster, yes. But um, we have some fun videos on our Facebook page if you are interested. I'm a geek about this. I love to know how it's made, how it's filled, how it's labeled, what the machines look like. So, all, so there are more and more videos that we'll be posting on our site as well. Different vehicles in which to use hand sanitizers, the no touch, stations have been very popular. When COVID hit, we were being asked a lot, can you source these? Can you source these? And we can source, we have custom um, sourcing capabilities. So we sourced a couple different brands. We got them in, everybody stood around. We liked this model best. The um, It's a nice weight to the pole on the stand. And then the wall mount is the same thing, just without the stand and you mount it to the wall comes with a laminated card on the top and you can put your brands on there. These are on the website. Um, these, the lead times on the website as well. We are getting them in waves and batches and we're, we have stock on both of these options. So it's pretty exciting. There is a lead time um, on these. So just, just see the website for the different lead times that 
that there is. I talk fast. So that <laughs> is my, you know, one, two punch on, on sanitizer. If there are questions, please let me know. I can also send me an email. My email is listed here. You can offline if you want our current scent samples. We have those available. I can send to you now. Um, anything you need, we, you know, please, please reach out to me and um, we can get your needs and questions answered. Gosh, I talk fast. Great. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, thank you. A lot of information. Great information. information. Thanks, Rena. Ready to share. <laughs> yeah. I'm personally pretty excited for the eucalyptus scent when it comes out. I know. I, I hate that regular hand sanitizer scent. <laughs> it's really good. We do have a couple questions. Okay. Um, so one question we have are um, regarding the client-friendly versions. Um, do you have anything on your website where people could go to pull down client-friendly versions of the uh, different hand sanitizers you offer? So we do, um, if you want to, client-friendly meaning, I guess. Like retail, um, that they can rebrand, basically. Yep, so all of our ingredients labels, um, which I'm going to pop back over to just so you, I can give you an, a view. Um, all of our ingredients labels have um, web Egan, Minnesota, made in USA. We have to have um, some of this information, but we can change it from saying web to distributed by, and we can put your your information in there. If that is, if that, if, if okay. I'm answering the question correct, we can do that. We can do virtuals to show you what that looks like, but um, we just have to know that going into it and we will proof it just like we would proof the label. So that's something we definitely have done and can do, yes. Okay, and also um, I know I'll talk a little bit about Distributor Central here in a moment, but you can definitely use Distributor Central's free tools to feature any of these products that you've seen from either supplier to both add to your website or also send a presentation to your customer. Um, yep. One other question I have, is um, what sizes of hand sanitizer are you guys currently offering? Well, what size are we not is the question, I guess. Um, we have everything from, <laughs> I mean, I'm not even, the, the, the styles that are available. If you go to our website and look at sanitizers and view all, you'll see all the different, but we have everything from, I mean, every size possible. We go up to a gallon. So we do refillable gallons as well as on there. So anything from, you know, half an, you know, half an ounce to all the way up to a gallon. So really any size that you would want um, is on our, on our website currently. With, without awesome. carabiners, anything you want. <laughs> Great, okay. Well, I know that we have some other questions. Um, I'm just gonna jump into a quick, brief um, piece of information about Distributor Central, but then we will also be following up with questions um, after the webinar, um, so everybody can re uh, get back to you via email with all the questions to answer all your um, questions we didn't get to. Perfect, I did see, and I, we do have this PowerPoint available uh, as a PDF I can send, and we do virtuals at no charge is one of my questions, so. Gotcha. Okay, so I was just going to end it really quick with a little bit of information about Distributor Central. I'm sure that quite a few of you guys have um, already been using Distributor Central, but um, we are a completely free service for distributors. Our supplier partners like Aprons and Web um, pay for the service, basically sponsor the service for you as a distributor. Um, some of the things that you can do with Distributor Central include taking those products that they were showing you today and giving you some great information about and adding them to a DC hosted website. Um, you can also create product lists that take those products and allow you to email a um, version of those in a presentation to your customer. Um, if you do not currently have a Distributor Central account, you can reach out to us and we are available at um, info at distributorcentral.com um, as well as our phone number here is listed, 888-516-7401. And that will conclude the webinar today. We do rec did record it, so I'll get that information out to everybody um, in a couple hours as well. 
Thanks so much for attending and we really appreciate it. Thanks.